So this is a patient uh, with Marfan syndrome who with a totally dislocated lens into the anterior chamber, uh, referred due to angle closure. So uh, we'll start off making a, uh, some incisions into the eye. Um, we are placing some viscoelastic here. This is dispersive viscoelastic in the form of viscoat uh, behind this uh, dislocated lens um, to really compartmentalize and um, uh, push the anterior hyaloid face back um, so that we have room to work here in the anterior chamber. Um, we then go ahead and make our main incision uh, using a keratome, a little bit more viscoelastic um, between the lens uh, and the cornea just to protect the endothelium. And then we use a, um, a mushroom just to place this behind this uh, lens and we go ahead uh, straight with the FACO probe and impale it into the um, capsule of this lens and very gently as FACO aspirate the lens from within the capsular bag, um, really keeping everything very, very gentle with low flow settings. Um, and the aim here is to um, aspirate this clear crystalline lens uh, into the FACO probe without um, causing any disturbance to the anterior hyaloid face at this stage as we do not want vitreous prolapsing uh, into the anterior segment and ending up in the tip of the phaco probe as this would cause traction on the retina. Um, once we remove the, the lens we then place some more viscoelastic uh, to tampon out the anterior hyaloid face as we come out of the eye. We then have to uh, do a decent core vitrectomy here um, as we're going to place a, a lens um, uh, which is fixated to sclera, we're removing some of the uh, viscote here that we used uh, pr uh, previously, and then carry out a thorough core vitrectomy. Um, and uh, once we have, uh, we feel we've completed the vitrectomy, we use some triamcinolone, um, and it is obvious that we've removed the, the vast majority of the core vitreous. Um, we then uh, leave the uh, infusion in place and create a further paracentesis and then insert a Lewicki cannula. Uh, this is very useful to maintain pressure within the uh, eye as we perform further maneuvers. So I'm marking 180 degrees apart here. This is for uh, Yamane fixation of a uh, scleral lens and we measure back a couple of millimeters back from the limbus and then another couple of millimeters back from our original mark. Um, to um, create the tracks that we need to um, scleroly fixate the um, three-piece lens. Um, we then uh, use a ZA9003 Technus lens. I think this is a very uh, nice lens for the Yamane technique. We place this into our um, injector um, and fold it carefully um, being care careful not to uh, snag the haptics, as these can sometimes be amputated um, if due care and attention is not taken. Uh, we put this into the emerald uh, injector cartridge and then um, inject the lens into the um, anterior chamber um, carefully um, onto the surface of the iris, being careful uh, to maintain the exact angulation so that the lens does not drop into the vitreous cavity. Uh, keeping the trailing haptic outside the eye also helps. We then bend these uh, 30 gauge thin walled needles. Um, this is the first needle um, and we uh, create a track um, and then dive into the, post uh, into the posterior segment, um, taking a perpendicular approach. We use the uh, 25 gauge uh, micro graspers. I think these are very useful for manipulating the haptics and we then place the uh, leading haptic uh, very gently um, and feed it into the uh, 30 gauge thin walled needle. Um, and we take our time here, there's no rush, um, and place at least half of the haptic uh, into the, the bevel of the needle. And then we use a, uh, an artery clip to um, disengage the needle uh, hub from the syringe, um, and then place the, the needle down very gently um, away from us um, before we uh, pass the, the, the second needle. Uh, we then go 180 degrees apart, uh, bend the needle again um, with the um, 
the bevel facing out this time. Uh, again, a two millimeter initial track, and then we uh, dive 90 degree uh, perpendicular uh, to the sclera into the anterior chamber. Um, and then once again, um, we just maintain our composure here, just very gently feed the haptic into the, um, the needle um, and ensure that at least half the haptic is in the needle. And then we remove uh, the, um, the syringe again. And we very gently uh, exteriorize these haptics. You can see here that as we're pulling, the lens is being uh, stretched slightly, and it's very important not to overstretch as this can cause um, bending and kinking of the haptics, which can affect centration later on. And we uh, cauterize about a millimeter of the end of the haptic to form the terminal bulb that is then uh, pushed uh, and fed into the scleral tunnel that we have fashioned. Um, and we start off with the with one side and feed that into the scleral tunnel and then the other side and the lens looks uh, very well centered we remove the anterior chamber maintainer hydrate the wounds and um, hydrate the main wound there's a little bit of a little bit of viscoating but this, this should not cause a problem you can see the lens is uh, very well well centered and we just check the wounds with fluorescein at the end and that completes the case I always like to give subconjunctival antibiotics here instead of intracameral um, as I think there is a risk of macular toxicity. Thank you very much for your attention.